On today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we have an installment on a series we like to call The Interviews, and The Beard is going to tell you who we're interviewing. And, yeah, not really sure I have to, but today we have with us Josh Scott from JHS Pedals and the JHS Show. So, how you doing, Josh? Doing good. Glad to be here. Thanks so much for doing this. I know you're really busy. You got Nam coming up, uh, some other things going on, lots of things going on over there right now. So we appreciate your time. Yeah. yeah. All right. So first question, because this is this is something that's been kind of I, Pat and I have talked about when we're recording and doing stuff for our show. We've talked about this many times, kind of like just wondering. So this is kind of cool for us to get the opportunity to ask you. Um, I, I remember being in Canada, sitting on a lake, when I saw the first JHS show episode. So I'm thinking, what was that? Maybe about a year and a half ago, two years ago. I love that scene in my head. Right. I'm sitting in my chair, looking over the lake, watching JHS. Enjoying nature, looking at his phone. You know. it's, like, it's like I want more info, but I <laughs> I'm 400 miles away from home, and you have to take a boat to get there, but we still have an internet connection, and I'm still watching the stars. <laughs> so right from the beginning, I think like from the first episode that I caught, um, I got this feeling. So like most manufacturers – it seems like they start YouTube channels to promote their own product. And right from the beginning, I got the feeling like this is something different, right? There's something different going on here. And I just thought like, it'd be cool to give you an opportunity to maybe, how did this come about? Why is it different than what we would maybe expect it to be? I, I think as a manufacturer, you're supposed to start a channel to push your own stuff, but I just, that wasn't why we started it. Um, yeah. I, I think the, the like short form answer is um, we we started it. Let's see, we're eighty. I don't know the count. I think 80, 80 85 episodes in. Um, so we, you know, we're well over a year, and I, it was about ten years into the company. I just like just so so burnt out. Got really, I got to where I like didn't want to play guitar. I was sick of guitars, just like guitar, 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 pedals, pedals, just constantly. A lot of traveling, um, you know, brand support stuff. And I ended up teaching uh, like a history of fuzz class at a local thing. And man, I just remembered how much I loved teaching history and stuff. And I, then I've always been a collector I have a huge pedal collection and, and I love all the stories and then I'd find myself, you know, being like, Oh, I know this guy from the store. I've met him at NAM or I did a product with this guy or, Oh, I got to do this thing with boss. I went to Japan. I saw this. And I, I started realizing like, man, I just need to share all these stories and kind of talk about the history of pedals from a perspective of someone who's that's all they do. And, you know, I think there's a lot of fascinating stuff. The, the people, the products, the history is crazy. I mean, if you go all the way back to the first effects and then through the 60s, how they evolve. And and I, we just kind of started the show because myself and Nick, who you see, he plays drums. That's when you see him. But he actually co-produces the show and edits the show. But at the time, the show didn't exist. So we're going back. Why did it start? It was basically him and I kept doing the random YouTube demo of a pedal and just like what a company should do. And we just hated it. Like both of us were like, why? I don't like this. Like anybody can do this. Why are we doing this? Um, and I would, I remember vividly, I pulled out like a less top gold, uh, a less Paul gold top. That was a slight dyslexic moment there. Pull out a gold top, and uh, I was just playing a riff on Instagram, and I was talking about this Pearl Jam song and how it worked. And it got like a hundred more, hundred times the interaction of anything we'd ever posted on YouTube. And this is like a crappy iPhone video. And Nick is like, let's just, let's just do this on YouTube. Let's quit doing the demos. And I was like, yeah, I want to just do the teaching stuff. And we start the channel. And at the same time, I had booked this event that I had kind of like right at the beginning of the show. I had booked this event called Off Off the Record. So thinking about a record. 
and we set up at a local Kansas City record store, my favorite one here. They have a stage where bands play. I set up Nick on drums, me on guitar, and Zach, who you see play bass, he was there on bass. And, um, you know, these guys have worked with me for like 10 years, so we're all friends, and we were just, we're going to learn some songs, bring a ton of gear in. I'm going to have one of the guys from the record store, DJ, put an album on, then teach what it sounds like it sounds, have all the gear they actually used if we did this live thing, and just kept snowballing into, this is what I should do. Um, we are JHS pedals, and I feel like when I, I shouldn't have to do a gimmicky thing to sell them, and if I, I just need to do what I love doing. I think that's primarily education, the stories, like, you know, I want to, I'm wanting to write books, getting into that. I want to do documentaries. We're obviously doing that already in small form. You saw like Dan Electro and all that stuff we did. And that's just what it is. The show is this very odd, it's the complete opposite thing that a manufacturer should do, but man, we love it. And so that's, that's what it is. It doesn't, I I can tell people are just staring at it a little bit like, what is he doing? You know, uh, and but we, got about, we got about yeah we got about fifty episodes in, and I finally did. I think the first DHS episode centric thing I did was uh, I did some like JHS pedals that I killed or something. Right, right. I finally talked. You know, it's like finally, um, but I just. I, I remember this conversation I had early on with uh, this guy in Carolina, and his name is Andy Elliott. He makes the Elliott Tone Master and stuff. Uh, it's a nice guitar that I've had for years. And he told me, he's like, I hate trying to sell my guitars because I just, because I know how they're good. And he's like, when I say they're good, I just feel like a car salesman. And I have that feeling a bit too. Like, I don't think there's really any bad pedals out there. I mean, there's a good way to use any pedal. And I feel like I just don't, I just, it's just not natural to me to be like, buy the JHS Superbolt. It's the best distortion. It's like, no, it's not. I know it's not. And so I just feel so comfortable teaching and, and doing the history of stuff, educating younger players. Um, there's so many young players that don't know all the things that we know at our age. And I think that's really important. So that's just that's what happened. It was an accidental thing that I now have fully committed into. I work almost thirty hours a week on the show. It's yeah. an intense job. Um, it's getting better and better. We launched the website. We're gonna do more resource stuff. Uh, what people don't see is my I have five. I mean, I'm working on ten to twenty episodes at a time, writing them. Um, and there's interviews and phone calls, transcriptions. I have a full-time editor that we make encyclopedic databases out of phone calls. It's crazy. So, I mean, at some point, I could see in 10 years, there'll be books, separate websites, encyclopedia, of effect, like a lot of stuff. And so I'm pretty committed to like this Snell pace. Like I know what I want to do. I'm not in a hurry and we're just going to keep doing the show and, and I love it. So... It's a, yeah. I know it's not the intention, but when I say it's it's brilliant, I think when you're that passionate about something and willing to share that and spend that much time doing the history and stuff, that kind of endears you maybe to, to people that are also interested in that. And then that, you know, like I don't, I never got the feeling you set out to sell the pedals, your pedals through that. But man, it made us so much more interested in what you were doing just because we get to know you through through the videos and get to know, know what the history and all that. So it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I've never, I absolutely, you know, a quick, I'll try to make this really quick. One minute. Since JHS started, I've never used sales reps. I had a couple that lasted a few months. I, I've always had dealers contacting us. I've, tr I've never had to feel like I needed to sell something. And that has been one of the reasons I've, I feel good. Like, I feel like it's a natural thing to, I don't need YouTube to sell JHS. And I, and, and I do feel that weird thing of like, I know there's probably people 
that think I'm like there's some master pinky in the brain thing going on. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? But I but I just legitimately love what you're seeing and uh, you know, time will tell. I'm that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing the history and but I do feel that it's like a backwards thing for me. Like I know there's some eyes like this makes no sense. What is he doing? I'm doing what I want to do. And that's well, I mean, like I said, we've talked about that several times, but it's always it, it hasn't been necessarily the pinky and the mastermind behind it, but just how much we liked what you're doing, I guess, and yeah. wondering how that came about. So that's a cool thing. I'm glad you shared that with us. Um, when I was thinking about this interview and, and getting to talk to you, another thing that kind of jumped out at me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, we started doing this YouTube thing about just under like we're like two two weeks shy of a, of a year right now, and it was kind of the same thing in that it was just we kind of fell into it by accident. It's been a lot of fun, and through doing it, there's been like these really kind of crazy opportunities that have arisen that we kind of sit back and look at each other. Like for instance, today we're sitting here talking to you about your show. Yeah. It's like one of those like, how did that happen? Um, since you've started the YouTube channel, what kind of, is there any of those crazy opportunities, things that you maybe didn't expect that have propped up, cropped up? And I know when we were talking on the phone, there were some interviews and stuff that you were telling me about, um, what you can get into and can't get into. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, the, the goal, like my, the primary dream scenario is to do more and more and more of what you saw last week. Who is Dan Electro? The Who is Ernie Ball episode from six months ago? Who is Ranger? Um, I'm getting into that with artists. I'm getting into, like the show's opened up, like, you know, I already, already knew industry people. You know, I've, I have interviews scheduled and conversations pending with people all over. Like. I go to England in February to do more interviews. Um, you know, some of those interviews will range could range from Roger Mayer about Hendrix to to who knows. You know, just all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm talking to Lucy Rush about the pet box, all that stuff. Just I'm trying to find all the stories that people don't realize they want to know, and because there's all these really fascinating things going on and have gone on for. 60 years. Um, so that's kind of the more we do, the more people see what I'm actually doing. And then the quicker things move. It's not that it's necessarily new ideas, but it's like, I've been friends with Brian Ball for a long time. And so I was like, Hey, I want to do this thing about Ernie, your grandpa. Cause like, nobody knows he had the first guitar shop in America. Nobody knows he invented light guitar strings. He's like, yeah, come over. So that was, and then once I did that, you know, uh, Steve was like, yeah, let's do Dan Electro. I saw Ernie Baugh. And then Mike Matthews saw Ernie Baugh and he said, come over. And he talks to me for three hours. And now we have all this Mike Matthews footage we have. So it's starting to snowball because, you know, it's that thing where, you know, you throw a party and nobody cool comes yet. But you get one cool guy there and then you tell the other cool guy, like, hey, he's coming. You to come to the party. You're, you're, you're the cool guy at our party. I, I, <laughs> sure. But it's, it's like you gotta you gotta kind of stir the you gotta make the snowball move a little. So yeah. you know, that's what happens. Pat it's, has used that line so many times since we started. It's so ironic that you said that because he's used no, that. It's it's just how yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's actually happening. It's been happening. It happened with the lovely series we did. It's happening with this interview series too. So it's really cool. Yeah. Um, so I think it's I think it's a good to maybe transition to the mm -hmm. actual pedal part, right? Which I think in, in my research slash talking of you, like you, you basically have proclaimed that that started by accident as well. So you've, you have two yeah. of these great things that have started by accident. 2006, fixing a blues driver was sort of the genesis of, of, of the pedal company. Is that accurate? Yeah. The foot switch went out, fixed it, which is like, you know, a, a trained animal could fix that, <laughs> but it just, just really got my interest. I went through that process of why does this circuit work? And I 
I had the uh, stock blues driver and then I had a Keeley one, which I'd used for years. I used to stack them. I took them apart and compared them. notebook, kind of wrote down this part's different. We went to Radio Shack. The internet was still fairly lame. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like two, wasn't like a, 1999 or anything but 2007 there was a real lack of there's a lot more diy uh guitar pedal information now and so i just basically got schematics i learned how to read a schematic i learned what parts or what just broke all kinds of stuff started modding pedals you know it's just a slow process but yeah and that kept growing and it was a total accident i remember like yeah my wife literally asked me I remember we were kind of transitioning. Where are we gonna? What are we doing here with our life? And I said, I'm committed to this. I'm doing the pedal thing. This is like 2008. We're in a CVS parking lot in Tupelo, Mississippi, and she looks over at me, like you know, your wife looks looks at you and says, "Do you really think you can do this? Like, can you support a family?" And in my mind. I did not know, but I said, absolutely. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> and that, that's how it happened. You know, yeah. it wasn't, there wasn't any kind of, that's it. It was just hard work, 18 hour days, you know, just work my butt off and do it. Yeah. By answering that question that way, you threw the shark in the tank and you had to keep swimming, right? I mean, it's that is the theme of my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So were you the kind of kid that like, love taking things apart were you like inclined that way yeah yeah i mean you know the flashlights the big pins ink all over my hand uh i remember when we got internet the i got a gateway 2000 computer it's like 1997 i found the weird website my friend showed me um and it had all these weird like hack like like you could hack telephone like uh, pay phones and we would like mess with pay phone tones and then i learned that i could pull the phone jack out of the wall and light a light bulb with it i did that my dad got onto me stuff like that <laughs> pretty yeah. basic pretty basic low low level terror <laughs> well i think you have all terror i've always been curious so that's good yeah. so uh, who, who would be an influence on you uh in in life whether it be for the we know from your episodes of five people I'm thankful for that, you know, from a pedal perspective, I think Robert Keeley would be in that. Music. Yeah. Yeah. But is there someone like outside of maybe the music world and what was some great advice they gave you? Like commit to something and then have to do it. <laughs> oh man. Uh, my, so many things, my mind goes back to right when I started the accident, got some Avery printer labels and, printed jhs mods on them and was selling them at a local shop in jackson mississippi the store owner there is a guy named patrick harkins and the store is fondren music it's a cool shop it's basically like vintage used stuff and that's the first place i ever sold anything and i remember like standing there with him and he was like he was same age but he was like these are selling you know he was like people are buying these silly modded boss pedals and he told me this story about, you know, when he started his store, he basically said this quote, um, the difference in successful people and non-successful people are, is that successful people do the thing that they say they want to do. And the unsuccessful people just sit there with the ideas. And I, that's always really stuck with me. I try to do the ideas, even if they don't work. I have had tons of failures, but that is like stuck with me because I think it was such a pivotal point of when I was starting the business. I, I, I knew at that moment, like I wanted to be someone because I'm very creative. I'm a creative brain and I, not pinking the brain, but I'm a creative brain and I wanted to, I wanted to be a person that actually did things instead of the person that's like, You've all been around, you know, you guys know people, they just talk about what they're going to do. I'm going to do this one day. And it's like, I don't, you know, at a certain point, you just don't care anymore. I just wanted to do something. And I think I just got to work on that. My dad ultimately would be the reason that I'm able to do that. A good work ethic. Um, I grew up on a horse farm, digging fence posts, hauling hay, 
working me to death, child labor style, you know? So, I mean, there's a work ethic in me that's from him. So he's my greatest influence, but I think definitely little moments like that advice from Patrick, like just the decision, I need to do it and not talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Successful people do things. Unsuccessful people might just sit around and think about what they could do, but they, they don't do it. Well, that's great. And so we want to keep things moving because we want to be respectful of your time. And because we are right up against the cusp of NAM, I think we have special dispensation to ask you what's next. And please tell me it's the onomatopoeia and that it's in the bucket under your desk with the antenna. Is that what's coming out at NAM? Is that around somewhere? Well, what do I got? I One day, that onomatopoeia, where did I first, where did you hear about that? Uh, you were on a panel. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The onomatopoeia. It's still a dream. Uh, so Nam, um, we have a lot of stuff happening this year. It's super exciting. Um, I'll go into February and go backwards. I can't say what's coming in February, but we actually had two significant things for Nam, which is next. Thir it's a week from now. Yeah. So one week from now, um, we had uh, we had two major kind of things. And one of those things is actually a sub-series. It's something we've never done where it's actually one release that's a lot of things. And it's really exciting. But I can't talk anymore about that. But that'll be in February. Um, but by the time this video airs, um, it will be public knowledge of this guy. So this is... Is that contrast? Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. So this is a Paul Gilbert signature. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's called the PG-14, Paul Gilbert 14. And uh, it's super cool. I'm really excited about it because um, I've got to know him over the last year or so. And we started working through what he's always wanted specifically like for his marshals and stuff. And it's just so crazy to work with like, you know, one of these top 10 most legendary electric, you know, players ever. And he's such a blast. I think he, what, when I first met him, we instantly just laughed constantly because we're both idiots. It's just like the best, it's just, we just don't care. You know, he's always making fun of the shredder, He's kind of the and he's like the enemy of the the Nam people in black leather being too serious. Like Paul Gilbert's like he's the you know the nemesis of that. And I think sometimes I turn into that even with this show. I, people just don't know what to do with like me making fun of myself. And so we just share like a a common thing. So this is really exciting. It is one of the coolest drive pedals we've ever done. It's super, I'm excited for everyone to play it and try it. Um, but today's Thursday. I don't know when you'll air this, but actually tomorrow is the episode is called Who is Paul Gilbert? Um, and that'll air and everyone will know that exists. So, and then the video is amazing. It's the longest video we've ever done. I decided to do a full on thing where people can get to know him instead of just watching him play fast. So it's a 30 minute kind of documentary music video jam session that in, it's amazing. It's just, it's like 30 minutes of silly awesomeness. Well, um, you two can actually look each other in the eye. You have that. In yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So I, so the PG uh, 14, uh, he wears a size 14 shoe. So do I. So that was funny. PG 14. <laughs> and um, it's a shoe in the middle is his name in a Japanese kind of uh, it's like a, a form of Japanese language. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. So what you have here is a little bit of the specifics. Um, it is a FET driven distortion. We would call it like an, a distortion engine. So it is the circuit of a tube amp stimulated with that transistors instead of two and then you have the dog logo. yeah yeah and, and then the dogs out. an active mid circuit that pushes into the front of it so that's called a pre-emphasis 
uh, active EQ, but it's just the mids. So this one pedal does overdrive, distortion. It'll sound like a wall of marshals. It, the thing that's so crazy about it, and Paul doesn't actually necessarily do this sound, it is the first pedal I've ever heard in my life, having played so many pedals, having tried to work through stuff. We accidentally nailed the Eric Johnson sound of a fuzz face into those marshals, like in a box with an amp in a room and you can still talk over it. It's crazy. It's really crazy. It's, it's exciting. It does a ton of sounds. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's and when will that be up? So it'll start shipping. I mean, dealers have already ordered it. So, you know, it's all secret right now, but uh, it'll ship Thursday. I mean, people can buy it Thursday. Well, people can buy it tomorrow. Never mind. Yeah, you can start ordering it tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have a big front run of them. You know, as usual, they're kind of selling through quickly, but we have the ability to make a lot of them. Yeah. That's great. So that I'm, I'm looking at the time now and we're getting close here. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to make sure we brought up, I think, um, in addition to all the cool stuff with the JHS show and all the stuff you guys are doing with your pedals, one of the things that I've noticed or seen over the years, last year or two, is you're pretty active in some news groups and stuff. But the reason I've noticed that is like anytime anybody is ever, and it's not often, right? Like two, three, four times or whatever, has posted a question or posted a problem with a JHS pedal. You've been there personally, jumped on that, and the customer service that what I what I see about customer service from JHS has always been incredible. Oh, uh, cool. That's good to hear. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think that that's worth this. Is, you know, we're doing these interviews so people can kind of, like you said, get to know the people that are behind uh, these companies, and I think it's just so important to mention that. Um, just seeing that. And, he, and seeing stories written about how great your customer service is. Somebody will ask a question. Somebody else will say, oh, their customer service is great and tag you in it or something. And I've seen you respond yeah. to the questions they've had. I think that's awesome. Yeah, we try to help. I mean, it, it's important. Um, it's important that JHS is seen as people. You know, obviously, I get seen as a person that is JHS. But, but you know, I, I say it on the show a ton, but, you know, companies don't make stuff. People make things. And I... I really, we try really hard to let people know, like, we're personal. Um, you don't have to go through some ridiculous process to get a pedal fixed. I mean, newsflash is pedals break, you step on them. So, you know, I try to disarm that. It's like, it's such a weird culture sometimes. You get on a forum and it's like, yeah, your pedal broke because you stomp on it every night. And that's why in the box, when you open the box, it says a huge red card says life limited lifetime warranty. Like unless you throw it out of a helicopter skydiving, I, I'm going to fix it for free. And we, you know, we try to just, it's like, we're just trying to bring some like rational thought to that process. And one of the ways I've attacked it over the last few years is just personally being like, Hey, yeah, your pedal broke. Yeah. We knew, we knew they're going to break, but they don't, break all the time when you build as many as we do right at right at like forty five thousand, we barely see any you know when you look statistically uh our failure rate's really low but you're gonna you're gonna break the pedal it kills me when i see people they're like i've had full tone they never break it's like i know mike fuller and i know they break <laughs> you, just, you, you just got lucky you know it's, we all you it's just the main thing is dealing with stuff like the switches on. No, your switches break because people love to use them, so they're always turning. Yeah, them. and <laughs> <laughs> why are you turning my pedal off? That's where the problem is. Well, you have to right. power down your pedal board, and then you have to turn right. it back. If yeah. you use it as an always-on pedal, yeah, yeah. <laughs> any JHS should never be turned off. I mean, there's your quotable moment of the interview. Right? Obvious. It's... Nice. Well, I, I, I'm really grateful for your time. There's so much I want to get into about hair horns and hair pieces because, you know, people care about hair. And, 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 it's real. Look. And bikes. And 
so I, you know, you like other pedals, like the ones that are on bikes. And I saw you and Ryan Burke go on for 25 minutes about burgers. I think I saw. Yeah, some I have a bike of- over. I have a bike over there in my office. There you go. I can't see it, but it's it's perfectly hiding next to record time. Very nice. Yeah, see it? There it is. Yeah, it can't. It can run, but it can't hide. Yeah. So you got, you know, you like the bikes and you like the burgers. And I think I saw like maybe on some of your Instagram stories, so maybe whiskey or bourbon. So maybe you could have a blog, you know, burgers, bikes, and bourbon. That could be your next accidental <laughs> foray and do it really well. <laughs> my mind goes like, that's a great idea. And then, then there's another part of my mind. It's like, just go to sleep. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I, I want to just say from this interview, I'm really glad that, that you found something that brings the joy back into music for you and the creative part. That's always fantastic. Like Jason said, that was part of the reason we started this show, because we were sort of like in a rut, like I'm musically yeah. at church and all we did, I yeah. played during rehearsal and he played with me and we had this gear. We never talked about it. So it's really great to, to know that, you know, you found something that's reignited that passion. And I know you given these historical lessons has been really great and i think coming up in the future you're going to help us with something else related to that and so yeah preemptive thank you for that and uh so i don't know if jason wanted to ask you anything else or... no i mean just because of time the, yeah there's about a hundred other questions but because of time i won't ask which seems to be one of the ongoing questions about when the soft tech episode is coming out i'll we won't <laughs> we'll try and get that here yeah. where <laughs> we already got the nom announcement, right? So we won't. Yeah, I will say, you know, the saw. So- I will talk about this. It doesn't need to be talked about. I try to chime in sometimes. Um, it's good to actually have a video here to say this. So the sob tech thing got real deep. It got real crazy. It was just going to be. It was going to be like, oh, I'm going to pull out a 212 cab, play them, yada, yada. Then I interviewed Mike Matthews. And then I interviewed a guy from Russia. Then there's another guy from Russia. And now there's, I printed, I did photography of what I had in front of Mike. I show him stuff he's never seen. And I, I like partially have uncovered like a strange conspiracy. I'm not like, I'm not, I'm actually not joking. Um, So like, I don't know. The episode just, it went from like a two to like a 20 and like, it's a little overwhelming. Um, but now I know that I can't just do the, I can't just do the, like, play them. So it's going to have to be, you're going to be like the Ken Burns of gear. We're going to see this on PBS. And that's what, <laughs> that's the joke is, uh, like we filmed, we filmed the, uh, history of tape echo it was one of the last things I filmed. I think I filmed it right at the end of November and it like turned into that. It was, it got ridiculous. It's like. 14 tape machines and all the stories and timelines There's like strings on the wall attached to pictures and you know the sob tech thing it got a little it got a little nuts it's still nuts i gotta finish a, one conversation with a guy from st petersburg and yeah we can, we can relate to that it, 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 even with our little channel we can relate to that because we dove into that lovely thing and it, it is almost overwhelming at this point how much we, what we started out, what it grew to, and how much we still have to do with it. And so I can kind of relate to that and, and then relate to that knowing that the scale that you're talking about is probably five times bigger than the scale that we're overwhelmed by. So Yeah, I mean, it, Crazy. it actually is. I, I, I've had to take – I've taken two journalism classes, like on my own, like through a, like online school. Because I just it started getting getting incredibly overwhelming. I mean, I have I'm working on I'm working on one episode that I I won't say the name of it because the company actually found out I was doing it and got really excited, so they're partnering with me. But it turned into twelve hours of phone call transcriptions, and I have an editor that I hired to help me break it down into an encyclopedia, like. That was also going to be a cute little let's play these like five pedals and smile. And then it just like everyone, I, it turned into the, it was just amazing. Like the things I learned, I, I just couldn't walk away. So yeah, the Ken Burns joke is definitely hot around here. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Because it's, it, I mean, it seems like there's so many avenues 
just it, it, thinking it, it, about the show. I mean, it really is its own business now, isn't it? In a way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's weird. It's real weird. I don't know what to do with it yet. I'm just trying to figure out what what to, I mean the the you know it's it, the traveling. It's crazy. It, it's expensive too. We did the Patreon. That's been amazing. So now the travel's paid for. But like J, what people don't see is JHS pedals paid a bajonka amount of money, if that's a term, you know, for the first year, like basically funded trips all over. And, you know, then I was like, okay, this got a little too big. I can't, this doesn't work. You know, it's not JHS pedals job to do episodes about DOD, but I am JHS. So it's weird. You know, there's a weird thing. And then the Patreon thing really helped. Um, And it's been amazing to see our like 450 patrons and, like we're going to London in February, in February, and it's paid for. Like patrons paid the whole trip, so we don't have. It's it's allowing me to do a lot more research and have an editor help with some of the research. And yeah, it's really cool. That's great. I needed another business. I wasn't busy enough. Right. Right. And there's always spikes, burgers, and bourbon too on the back burner. So yeah, good. we'll do that together one day. All right, that'd be great. I'll bring the bourbon. All right. <laughs> So I think with, with that, um, even though the, the temptation is here to jump down five more rabbit holes that came to mind as you we were talking. Just jot them down. We'll do, we'll do another one. one that, that would be great. So, I just keep waiting for a giant shepherd's crook to come from, I think it's <laughs> Katrina sitting off, just be like, okay, interview over now. <laughs> like the golf you, know, you, just, you just see this happen? Yeah, the chair starts to throw the hands, right? <laughs> Just like that. That's a great so, Yeah, Before we totally lose Josh Scott, uh, I would like to, you know, we have a bunch more. Yeah. yeah, I think a bunch more of these interviews coming up. And so if you'd like to see more of these interviews with these people that are doing awesome things in the guitar world, please subscribe to the channel. Stop by Facebook, stop by Instagram and um, so follow those things. Uh, but more importantly, I've been flashing up on, I haven't been flashing anything other than the web addresses up on the screen. So there's two, there's the jhspedals.com and then the jhsshow.com uh, and also social media. So obviously JHS show on face on YouTube, but you got stuff out on Facebook and Instagram as well. So make sure you go out and follow Jock there. And I think with that, Today, the tagline is never more appropriate because I am definitely preaching to the choir. But this is PJ on behalf of the beer, reminding you no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. That's true. <laughs> <laughs>